new building, which is the property of Coltis Coltery Erin, here in Cashel, in County Tipperary. Now, the name of the building is Brew Baru, and its function is to be that of an arts and cultural centre. Now, you have never seen it before on the telly, because, of course, it has never featured on any television programme before this. And, in fact, it hasn't even been officially opened as yet. Now, it is a most lovely modern building. It's airy and bright and spacious. And would you believe it, it even has air conditioning. I'm telling you, these people in County Tipperary are going to be streets ahead of the rest of us when this global warming business starts. Absolutely streets ahead. Now, we decided that it would be a very fine and fitting idea to start off this evening with a group of dancers who actually share the same name as the building. And to give you an idea of what the building looks like outside, we decided to take the group of dancers and film them earlier today just under the rock of Cashel and outside this lovely new building. So I say, here's to Brew Baru. <laughs>
dancers in the country. They certainly are among the best. That's the group, the Brew Brew Dancers. And with me now is their choreographer and producer, Uno Marahu, Agus Ling Freshen, Ta Arts Jurahor Holtis Kultri Erin, La Rosa Marahu. Fatiroth. Well, La Ross. Iha Anawar Isha. Iha Anawar Erfad. Iha Anawar Agus Anna Hawk to Freshen Agus. And what is Talk to Captain Nago? Well, it's, it's a, a great sense of national pride as well as local pride that Brubaru has become a reality and particularly because of the united effort which we had here. It wasn't any one person or any two people. So many bodies were involved in doing it. You know, you had organizations like Board Falsha, Southeast Tourism, you had FOSS, Tipperary County Council, Cashel Urban Council. So many different bodies helped us. And it is a great sense of pride to know that right at the foot of the Rock of Cashel, we have this cultural center, which will in many ways enhance the image of Ireland and hopefully also raise our own pride in ourselves as a race of people. Well, now it is a fabulous setting, all right, just tucked under the Rock of Cashel. It is indeed, and, and we appreciate the location itself. It's strange how not everybody would see it perhaps uh, in the same way. Antiquity is a relative thing, really. And we had a very funny incident here. We had a very affluent looking Texan who arrived and he had the 10 gallon hat and the cigar and everything that goes with it. And uh, he arrived in here to the building after being up at the Rock of Cashel. And he was in great mood. He was looking around the bin. I like this building. I like the timber. I like the white walls. It really looks exceptionally well. But I'll tell you something for nothing, he says. That heap of rock up there, he says, is an absolute con job. <laughs> <laughs> everybody all of the time that's for sure well Una your dancers are certainly no con job they're, they're a marvelous group of dancers you, you've come on so terribly well in the last six or seven years haven't you that, that particular group well we grew naturally I'd say Bibi we used to perform here in Holland and Fela every summer and for tourists and visitors and locals the whole lot and people came liked what they saw and they started inviting us um, both in Erin and August Harlar so we then had to come together to practice and that gelled us together as a group. And, and this business of actually travelling abroad that you mentioned there, I mean, Tashiv Ijanashunt and Nachmoregan Amsha. Tomage, we were in uh, Sardinia, Milan, Japan, Baden Baden, Germany. I was along Tirella Bolispe in the What about and Sardinia? Tell me about that. That uh, must have been a lot of fun. Sardinia was wonderful. Uh, Two Sardinians, um, two young Sardinians, uh, Italo and Giovanna, came to Cashel one summer, saw us and said, well, you know, you must come to Sardinia. And we said, yes, yes, because we thought that would be it. But they went back to Sardinia and they did their homework and they brought us out. They had a thousand people at the concert in Cagliari and we were determined, at least we carried the flag for Ireland. We said, we're going to do this as well as we possibly can. And were you not and a little bit worried that they would have difficulty, uh, well, just understanding what you were at? It would, it would have been so different, I, I would have thought, to anything they were used to. This was the main thing. This is what really amazed us, that we were all convinced that the Irish originated in Sardinia. How come? Because <laughs> the Sardinians, they responded to every nuance of the music and dance. And on one occasion, we were there for a few days, and on one day, they actually brought us up about 200 miles into the center of the country, a very hilly country, beautiful landscape, very like Connemara. And we performed in the village square for the local people. And the rapport was so great between our people and the Sardinians that the following night, that when our concert was on, they traveled down two busloads and they arrived in. There were no seats for them, so they stood at the back. And after the concert, they got together with our group. And you could have been in Don Queen. They held hands and they did their Shanno singing. Now, I don't know what language they were using because they're certainly, the Sardinians use their language and we used Irish and English and everything. And and, but they understood each other. It, it, it was wonderful. Fabulous. Yeah. Laura, that sort of uh, coming together of singing and that sort of impromptu session, that has hitherto always been held in Ireland, or at least mostly, in pubs and, and, and 
well, I suppose mostly in pubs. So is this a new trend? It's highly organized, it's not impromptu. I think it's an important trend, first of all, because I think many tourists coming to Ireland, or most tourists, are very sophisticated type of people. And they know that they want something different when they come to Ireland and they want a high class packaged entertainment, but they still want it authentic. I think this is the, the key word. And we feel it's important that the pub setting is grand, but you can only do so much there. And Irish traditional music, it's so artistic and it's so full of feeling and so full of potential that it's very important to give it a proper status and put it into a proper setting. I think what you see happening here and in some other parts of the country is going to spread because bear in mind that tourists want to hear Irish traditional music and they want to hear Irish dancing and because it's absolutely exclusive to us, it's ours and it's something we're good at, we can't have any competition from any other country and I think we must avail of all the opportunities which come our way in that regard. Agus, and will Fawcett talk on Lean Dini and Ishathas to go to school to the Tho, tha fawsi dosach madalik tjoltori oga. I vado hin madalish kesh na gailge, de viak dina ra, gare bru aon, agus nak sirf simig dina aon. But in the case of Irish traditional music, we can't service the number of requests which we're getting from young people who want to learn Irish music. We have 600 classes at the moment, and over a million people come to cultist functions every year. So there's no doubt about it that there is this uh, resurgence of interest. I think also it may be a worldwide resurgence in fairness because, as you know, in the United States, the very same thing has happened. You know, you have the Americans wanting to go back to their roots. And where do they have to go? To Back to the Red Indians, mm -hmm. the, the very ones that they had coerced. They now want to bring them back and indicate in some way that this is part of their heritage. In Ireland, we're much better than that because we have a continuity of heritage. We've always revered it, even when it was coerced. And I think it was only a matter of bringing back the flame again. I think that has happened. Because in Gavin do Bejo le Nejeg no kado, in your Hyoki Shishin, in 1992, that there'll be greater emphasis again on our own cultural identity. Well, there's one thing certain, there'll be a greater challenge. And as you know yourself, whether it's in Croke Park or wherever you go, the Irish love a challenge and they rise to it. And I think the Irish people are going to the rise to the challenge of 92 as well. And that's going to be true of culture. And we don't have to feel inferior about the culture because all over the world, people take an interest in Irish traditional music, not just to hear it, and appreciate it, but to actually learn it. You know, it's very funny at times to see somebody with no Irish connections whatsoever and they play in rakish paddy or something like that on a tin whistle. And I one of the great mm, things too, surely, about it is that, especially in Northern Ireland, Protestants and Roman Catholics alike yeah. identify with it, unlike the Irish language, I think. Well, that struck home to us very much. One of the outings Brew Baru had was to the Guild Hall in Derry. And it was on the very same night as the Anglo-Irish Agreement was signed. And you may remember there was a threat out that they didn't want Southerners going up because of the emotions and that. But we went up to the Guildhall and we had an audience that night, which we know subsequently was divided between the Unionist and the Nationalist population. But nobody questioned politics that night. Nobody asked you at what shrine you adored God. We were all Irish together. And I think Irish traditional music has done that for people. It doesn't matter about class distinction. It doesn't matter what job you have. It doesn't matter what age you, ha you are, what religion, what politics. And I think we shouldn't underestimate the value of that in the future Ireland. Well, I'm sure Brew Brew will have a very big part to play in the years that lie ahead and bringing all that even further down the road. But for the moment, may I say, Gura Kid Mila Mahagav, Una Agus Lauro Sumaratu. Well, it is. Shama Kara, the Kudj and Vibi Show, a Shalim Clancy, Agus Tashin Shotling and Ock, Lena Harja. His friends are Paul Grant, a bass and guitar, Agus Geraldine Dunn, Erin Cello. Agus to Liam Clancy, Con Shana Iron Alling, a Khanu doing Red is the Rose. Here he is, Liam Clancy.
come over the hills to your darling. You choose the road, love, and I'll make the vow, and I'll be your true love forever. And red is the rose that in yonder garden grows. Fair is the lily of the valley, and clear. flows from the dawn, but my love is fairer than any. It was down by Killarney's green woods that we strayed, when the moon and the stars, they were shy. The moon shone its rays on her locks of golden hair, and she swore she'd be my love forever. And red is the rose that in yonder garden grows. Fair is the lily of the light. With my sister Kate, tis not for the grief of my mother, tis all for the loss of my bunny Irish lad, that my heart is breaking forever. Sing it on your own. Red is the rose, and in yonder garden Fair is the lily of the valley. Fair is the lily of the Well, my next guest this evening actually sneaked away out of the Kingdom of Kerry to come back to this, his favourite town in Ireland, or certainly one of them, and that is writer Brian McMahon. And with him is my favourite dancer, I do think of all times, whose sprightly feet you saw in action earlier on, the man who was 75 years young, and that is Jack Slattery. You're most welcome. Well, Brian... Right, you've been coming here, they tell me, for something like 55 years. That's right, Tasha Shin Cart. 55 years 55 and all. 55 golden years, That's every right. one of them ticked off. What do you like about Cashel especially? Well, it's Cashel Moon, Cashel Aaron, star, people, countryside, history. Cashel is addicted to three things. History, horses and hurling. That's true. That's absolutely true. What about the history? Lots of marvellous stories, legends yeah. too, not oh, just history. Are. This is one of the great places of Ireland. Tonight is one of the big nights of Ireland, this beautiful building. It's, it's absolutely, to me, it's stunning. Something I dreamed about, never thought I'd see. But you have to go back to the own talk, to go back to the fourth century. St. Patrick baptising a chieftain or a king here. And uh, the staff, the, 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 the point of the buckle goes through his instep and he thinks it's part of the of the scenario of the baptism, you see. So it is a wonderful place. Everything about it is marvellous. The rock, I think the rock was described as, um, by Frank O'Connor as a fist clenched above the town. Mm. But to me, Cashel is, to, I, I steal the quotation from somewhere, it's a rose-red city half as old as time. 
that Texan could take a few leaves out of your book, Brian, couldn't he? <laughs> that Texan that Larry Ross was talking about. <laughs> Jack, what about you now? You grew up about 12 miles up the road, isn't that That's right? That's right. Yeah. Now, yeah. I know that you, you lived for 23 years outside of Ireland. Yes, I yeah. lived in America. And did you do a lot of dancing over there? Very, no. I gave it up all together after I left Ireland. Why did you do that? Uh, well, the style of dancing that I do, the old traditional style of dancing, it changed. Oh, but I know time. it is, and that's what's so marvellous about it, because you don't see so much of that old-fashioned dancing no, anymore. No, you don't see so much of it anymore. Yeah. And nobody wanted to see it at that time, because the modern dancers, as I call it, came in. There was a lot of tapping. It was very spectacular, very nice, a uh, lot of high kicking in it, and it looked very good. But not your style. Uh, but but uh, now again, when there's not much of it left, people like to see the old traditional style dancing now again. And are you passing it on to other young people? Oh, yes, as, as much as ever I can. As yeah. much as I can. Yeah. You're that very I'm... fit for a young fellow for <laughs> years. <laughs> well, that's about the only exercise I have. I dance a lot, dance four or five or six nights a week. Yeah. And I, I was told that you sometimes would even have to perform three one hour shows in the day. That's a lot yes, of dancing. Yes, we, we, did, we did that when we were in, in Osaka in Japan in, in June. Yeah. We did three one-hour shows several days. For, for one week, we were there for, for a full week in a second. And how did you find the Japanese? Oh, they were marvellous people. They were so polite, so mannerly, and honesty. Completely, completely honest. No vandalism of any sort is, is not known there. And the cleanliness of the people and everything connected with it. Unimaginable. You can and they're also very respectful of elderly people, aren't they? That's right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, no, no, I'm not suggesting you're in that category, <laughs> darling. No, 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 oh, yeah, not yeah. at all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jack, uh, you have a fierce twinkle in your eye, and you're going to get me into all sorts of bother tonight, I can tell. <laughs> all sorts of trouble. No, I didn't mean you, but I do know that about the Japanese, isn't it true? Oh, oh yes, well, there was a, a reception there one night, and there was a quite elderly old... Uh, professor, Japanese professor, quite a lonely man. He came along. He was really full of the, full of the brew, brew, and the dance, dancing in particular, worse than the music. Yeah. He wanted a video of the show by right or wrong. He wasn't, he wasn't taking no for an answer. He had to get to someone that was going to give him a video of the show. Goodness. He had seen it three times yeah. himself. Yeah. That's what he thought. Couldn't get enough of it. Couldn't get enough of it. That's yeah. right. Now, I want to ask you, Jack, before we leave this, wh when you, uh, you stopped dancing in America, I guess you didn't have to go to Erin. I didn't have to go to Erin, I guess I didn't have to go to Erin, I guess I didn't have to go to Erin, I guess I didn't have to go to Erin, I guess I didn't have to go to Erin, I guess I didn't have to go to Erin, I guess I didn't have to go to Erin, I guess I didn't so your, your wife then died shortly yeah, after right. you came back. Correct. And you hadn't really made a new circle of we friends. We made, no, made no new friends. Yeah. We, were only, we were only back about two years, living there two years when she died. And, and did you start to dance again to sort of take uh, care of yourself? I was for seven years then. I just lived life with semi-reckless. And the Gaily started in the local parish. And I got pulled myself out of it after a while. And did it and help the loneliness? Started a new, complete new life. At 65, they say life begins at 40 sometimes. But at 65, 65 a brand new life started for me again. Well, you're an example to us all, and long may you live, Jack. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, Brian, what about Coltus itself? I know that you're a sort of an <coughs> honorary member of Coltus, and, and you do admire the organization a lot. Yes, I have great admiration for it. It's one of the. It came up from under our shoes without any seeding from above, you know. It wasn't artificially seeded, artificial insemination of any sort of culture. It came up underneath us. And I remember a time when the, when the Irish dancing was patronized, you know, looked down upon. But not so tonight. Tonight is a different night. That's but uh, we, I have lived to see, to see the work of, to be specific tonight, of Lauros and, and Una come to fruition tonight in a magnificent way, in a way I thought would never, never see. And uh, I was here many years ago with Lauros, and he was doing pageants of mine here in the convent grounds, and I was in touch with him all the time in the early flan, and with him in the stall, and saw them all over Clare, Willie Clancy, they work with all these, and, and Martin Talty and these people. So I have a great growth, a grand murgum than cultus, because I think it's one of the great things in this country. It shows forth what we have. There's one thing I'd like to stress, that uh, when I was here 50 years ago, you know, the local people, they, they came in coaches from the villages of Munster. 
and they came here to Cashel, just as the same as they'd go to the seaside or something like that, to Ballybunion or Port Stewart or anywhere you like, at Bundoran. And uh, they, they went up on the rock. Now, I'm going back to the time of Dean Innes and Ryan and, and um, Dean Innes and Joe Ryan. Minogue and all these people. <laughs> and um, they came here and they had a great day here. They had a picnic on the rock. And then they went up to the square castle, I know, every inch of it, and the beautiful Cormac's Chapel. If I started talking about Cormac's Chapel, the, when a lord could he, would he brack on lay, they can talk. But they, they danced there. And this is a, a, a number like a chord to what's happening tonight, because it's just all art, I think, comes up out of the clay. It's refined in the towns like this. And here's the refined way to do it tonight, because it's a continuation of what these village people came here from 50 miles around and disported themselves on the Rock of Cashel. And, of course, there is one other very important connection that you do have with Cashel that you haven't mentioned, unless you get into trouble when you go home. May I remind you, your lady wife? Yes, my wife is from Cashel, the South Cashel Moon. From the foot of the rock? At the foot of the rock, yes, that's true. Yeah. I was uh, an innocent carry man. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we have to leave that story if for another not, day, I'm afraid. that's not a, a contradiction in terms. <laughs> I suspect it is a gross contradiction in terms, <laughs> and, but I would look I, forward to having the opportunity to find out another time. I found out that I married not merely a woman from Cashel, I married the whole south of Tipperary. <laughs> <laughs> and they all know that. <laughs> well, can I say thank you very much indeed to both of you, you and Jack, for coming here. Here this evening, Brian McMahon, August Jack Slaffery, <laughs> Gurmina Mahadev. Thank you. Well, we're now going to hear a very old art form indeed, sung by a very young woman, and that is Iron Erin Shamnos, a Hani in this Deirdre Odi, a Hana say, and Kasajak Bon is Tijil Don Iron, and we thought that seeing as the rock is. Is, uh, well, it was very inevitably going to be talked about a great deal this evening. We also thought we should film The Rock and Deirdre earlier this afternoon. So let's have a look at this now. Deirdre O.D.
And Byron, as Gacht in Aku in a Valde Holtis Kyoltri Erin, Agasrach really mentioned that Henemaku. Well, my next guest was assistant county manager in this area when the Brew Brew project started off, and he's Mr. Dave Mackey. And with him, we're delighted to have the Deputy Director General of Board Falls, Matt McNulty. <laughs> well, Dave. Everything, of course, has to have a beginning. And that very first day when Lyros came to you as the first person in official dumb, as it were, and said, look, I have this brilliant idea. What did you think? Uh, the idea originally was for a chat kyo, Bibi. Uh, and and a, house, a, a house of music. House of music. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember well, it was after a meeting in the county council chamber in Clonmel. Lyros approached me. Uh, knowing Lyros, I knew it would be successful. Um, it was born out of that. Um, and after about 10 minutes discussion, we discovered we had a site. The county council owned the site. And then all we needed was two million pounds to all? bring the project to fruition. <laughs> so that's nothing. So between the two of us and, and many other very hard working committee people, we, we got a steering committee set up. Uh, people from Board Falcha, the regional tourism organization, who were extremely helpful. Uh, people like Joe Whelan from Boss, uh, who were totally committed to it and who operated part of uh, the project under the Community Youth Training Program. Uh, even the Arts Council contributed to the piece of sculpture with the county development team. Uh, we had the Urban Council and the County Council. In fact, I, I remember um, one morning we were almost ready uh, to start work in the foundations. And uh, I rang up the county engineer, uh, the former county engineer, Jim O'Callaghan, who's in the audience this evening. And uh, I said to Jim, um, we're ready for the foundations, Jim, but we have no money as yet, and we cannot get any overdraft as yet. And Jim looked at me and he said, uh, 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 he said, listen, young man, he said, he said, you leave that to me. He said, keep your head down and I'll take it from there. <laughs> and from this day to that, 
BB. I still don't know where Jim got that money from, <laughs> but he got it. You're certainly not at ask tonight. <laughs> We do know where some of the money came from. Uh, some of it, of course, was fundraising by cultists themselves, but Matt, Board Fawlty did chip in some money. Well, we were delighted to help. Of course, we got the European structural funds for tourism, which were a godsend. Uh, unfortunately, they weren't for culture, they were for tourism, but uh, Lauros is very persuasive, as anybody who knows him will tell you. And uh, like Dave, uh, he came to me with this, this marvelous idea, and uh, we were delighted to get involved and to help, because this, this is exactly the type of thing we want to reflect Irish culture. But this is tourism too, is it not? It's absolute tourism, yeah. yeah. But I say that because there's lots of people with cultural projects around the country which are pure cultural projects. This has a very high tourism content. Yeah. What was it that impressed you particularly, and therefore brought Falter about the project? Well, I think the first time I came to the site and met uh, Laura Sanuna, and I, I saw this modern building snuggled up under the rock of Cashel, uh, and uh, it really impressed me, the, the Irishness of the building. Uh, it exudes Irishness without being in any way stage Irish. And this is the type of character building we need in a modern building to reflect our culture in, in 1990 and beyond. And the type of tourist that's coming to Ireland now is really a rather different person from, say, the, the American that came 20 years ago. I mean, I know they still come too, but I sh should imagine they're a much more, well, a fussier type of person. They're fussier, but they're coming for different types of experiences now. They're no longer happy just to travel around in buses or that. They want to meet the Irish people. They want to experience their culture. They want to participate. Uh, they want to see. They want to touch. They want to learn. So we're trying to give them all these experiences now in the new tourism plant which we're building around the country. What about uh, Lauros? Of course, you knew him from of old, didn't you? Of course, Lauros's reputation uh, always precedes him, you know. <laughs> and uh, you look at me now. Uh, I mean, I was not only a young man, but I actually looked a young man <laughs> before, I, before I started the Dublin Millennium. And I was looking oh, at... Oh, it was the Dublin Millennium that put years on you. I was looking at Lauros early on, and I see he still has the nice brown hair, but he's put, <laughs> he put some of these grey hairs uh, here when we launched the Dublin Millennium because... Uh, I called upon Lauris, as many of our people do. We called on him to go to Japan in June. We called on him, or Bill Walsh, my colleague here, called on him to go to uh, President Reagan when he in Ballyporeen. I called on him to, to, to launch the Millennium in Dublin. And we put on this massive concert with an audience of 35,000 people in College Green. And um, it was a very tricky situation. About 150 people participating, about 100 artists going to perform on the stage. And Lauris was the director, he was the producer, he was the arts he was he was everything. And I remember being all uptight about this because it was the first thing. And Lauris was there, and nothing, he was like Gary Cooper on stage, nothing was happening. Uh, so he was saying, are you ready to go on? I'm like, no, I have only got one shoe so far. You know, are you ready, Moira? Oh, yeah, will you go next? So, and the, the whole running order was on the back of a cigarette packet. But uh, Lauris always delivers, we have to say that. And not only delivers, but he delivers in a way which makes us all proud that we're Irish and proud of our Irish culture. He's cool, all right, but highly organized. He's cool. He's, a, he's, right. a, he's an achiever, a laid-back achiever. There's a good description for him. I bet he hasn't heard that before. <laughs> well, Dave, I suspect now that there are a lot of other small Irish communities all over the place thinking, wouldn't it be lovely if we could have a building like this too? Is it something you think that... that what are the lessons to be learned from having been involved in the construction of this? Um, I think there's one big lesson, and um, uh, that lesson is evident all over the country, uh, in small and indeed large communities. And it's this, Bibi, it's um, where people are prepared to organize themselves, work hard without any material reward, um, prepared to eliminate the negative thinkers and the people who say it can't be done and who are prepared to be a little bit undemocratic and simply get the achievers together and get them working together, that that community will thrive. Uh, there was a time, and it's not too long ago, when there was, I know the people of Cashel will forgive me for saying this, there was a lot of apathy, a lot of negativity, um, and a lot of um, backward thinking in Cashel and the surrounding area. But the people the Tidy Towns Committee, the Chamber of Commerce, the Urban District Council, and the people, the local branch of Coltis, they decided to get up and do something about it. And they did, instead of knocking each other, instead of finding all the reasons why things shouldn't be done, they started to get together, to work with one another, to think positively. And in the space of five years, this town, uh, environmentally, and economically has been transformed. And the people of the town themselves, working together, 
have done it. And they've also been pretty shrewd. They've got access to organizations and the people within them, like Matt McNulty, who wield a lot of power. And they've opened up a lot of public purses, and indeed private purses. And they've gone out and led by example. And they've achieved this wonderful cultural center, which we see here this evening, and the wonderful town that now is Cashel. And a blueprint, therefore, I think, for a lot of other Irish communities watching tonight. Absolutely. Dave and Matt, can I thank you enormously for coming along? Or a kid, Mila Mahagov. Dave, Matt, and Matt, 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 Matt. Okay, a slow air and a reel. That's what's in store for you next. The name of the slow air is O'Rahilly's Lament. It's going to be played by Paula Dowling on the flute with Kim Fleming on the harp. So a nice welcome, please, for them. Well, down here in the audience now, and I'm with John Sheehan, who is the man who actually dug the very first sod on the site of Brew Brew. And a very exciting few years, I should think, it's been for you, John. That's right, Ona. Or, um, oh, baby, well, it's all right. Baby, you can call yeah. me anything. I don't yeah, mind. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah. They love it. They love it. You're the hero. John Mial, darling, I have been called much worse things in my <laughs> life, and much worse things than Una. Yeah. Uh, w was it an exciting few years for you? Because I know that you kept uh, an absolutely meticulous record of everything that happened here. Well, we did. It's very essential, I think, on a, a job of this magnitude that you do keep records. You can always look back on them. You yeah, know, but not the way you've done it. I mean, let's show the viewers at home this lovely diary. Every, everything that happened on yeah. the site. Yeah. It must have taken hours and hours, John. Well, it took quite some time to do it, you know, and reading it's written like that is sort of legible for everybody. Yeah, indeed and, it yeah, is. Anybody can read it, yeah. And you worked with some great master craftsmen. Well, I did indeed, you know. I was, I was very lucky to work with people here like John Deaton, a great backup team, and Michael Tuberty and uh, my nephew Pat, and Richard Long, the electrician, and, and Mikey Cameron, the plumber. I was very, very lucky to have worked with these people. Yeah. And with you also, we have Mary Dorgan here, who represents yes. FOSS. Uh, that's, you're the regional director, isn't that that's right? That's right. And a lot of your trainees worked with John and the other craftsmen here that's too. That's right, yeah. We, we've been involved in it for a number of years as well. And I suppose the, the main aspect of our involvement has been the community youth training program that Dave Mackey mentioned there. Yeah, what does that do for young people and for communities? Well, what it does really is that um, it will provide the labour to get a project like this done. 
um, while at the same time in return we get the skills and the, the people trained. So we had on this project, we had trainees, we had apprentices and we had craftsmen, all unemployed. And, and of course now that the building is complete, I mean you're still using it because you have courses ongoing here now. We do, we have another course on at the moment which is a very interesting one, which is uh, an external training course and um, that's happening here in the premises here. And uh, the, that's because the project is now getting to the stage where, where jobs are um, coming up, we're hoping. And uh, what those people are learning at the moment is all the skills about running a place like this, um, which is not just to do with the stage, uh, most of them have performing skills already, but everything to do with the administration, the reception area, the kitchen, the restaurant, the lighting, the design, the production, and all of that as well. Yeah. So there's all sorts so of possibilities within the building. That's right, yeah. yeah that's well, right. John Deaton, the architect of this lovely building, I think a round of applause for the architect. <laughs> you what you were trying to achieve with this building is you'd like to spend the next two hours telling me but I wonder could you tell me in 40 seconds <laughs> well BB it was a very very um, exciting site in a very exciting location but also a very sensitive one and the building had to be traditional not just for Cashel but for Coltus and to express what they were all about so what we've done in essence is to wrap a very traditional building around a very sophisticated core and we did that by going back to the old ways the native methods of building going back to simple stone, plaster, wood, slate roofs, brightly painted windows, all of those things. And it, I could say that it was such an excitement and so great to come here and to hear the music coming from the building. It was really lifts one heart. I must say it makes it all worthwhile. Well, you, did, you may have kept the design very simple, but I think very effective. It's truly a magnificent building, and I think one of the nicest that I've seen in, in the last 10 years, certainly, in Ireland. So well Thank done you to much. you, John. Maeve Nesbitt, you're a puppeteer by profession, right. but you are now actually attending courses in Brewbrew already. Yes, that's what correct. sort of course are you attending? Well, I'm attending the Tourism and Cultural course, and uh, we have, we're trained in a variety of skills, from retail management to cooking to stagecraft. And I'm mainly interested in the stagecraft end of things. And we're very, very lucky to have uh, Tomás McConaugh from the Abbey Theatre to train us in these skills. Oh, indeed. And you're enjoying the course? I am indeed, yeah. yeah. No complaints about Brew Brew? No, not at all. No, no not, not a bit. Well, of course, we couldn't find ourselves, I suppose, in County Tipperary and not just say a brief hello to some of its best-known GAA people and hurlers in particular. And look who we have here in the audience tonight. Not just one boner, Cormac, but two brothers as well. The three brothers who played on the tip team, well, well, still do. Played last year, didn't do too well. You're going to do it next year, I know. Isn't that right, Cormac? Well, we were disappointed at the last year, but um, yeah. we always look to the future. Yeah. Tipper, Tipper a good team. And Nobody denies that, mind you. Tell me something. Are you related to the big man from Donegal that has the same surname? Uh, the way my father always answered that question, uh, he turns the scale around and says, is Patrick related to us? <laughs> <laughs> You know, if you're boner, are you boner or bonner? Well, boner is what the Donegal pronunciation that is. That is absolutely true. That's what they call it up in the north. Oh, canalfshi, it comes from the Irish canalfshi, canalf meaning bone. Now, you being three brothers playing on the one team, I think that that has only happened twice before in the history of the GAA. Would that be right? That's right. Yeah. The yeah. Um, records of Wexford and the Connollys of uh, Galway. Yeah, that's what I thought. And sure, if I was wrong, dear Aina Brophy would tell me anyway, wouldn't you, Aina, darling? <laughs> There's a little private joke. Parfit Cell we're delighted to have with us as well. Captain the under-21 team in 19, 1978, wasn't it, when they won the Munster final? I'm getting better at these sporting things all the time. We have to leave you in lovely Brew Brew, but not before you see some of the best set dancing. Go to Cade Mila Mahagav Asokton Karu, Avehan Shah, and next week we'll see you too. Gujishin Slanagav. <laughs>